Let's dive through this breaking nuclear news. Let's start out with price action. We do not run away from scary charts here. Sprout Uranium Miners ETF down 11.5% on the week. The broader market also down 3.74% in a broad-based asset sell-off. The Federal Reserve does not want you to make money. That is the reality right now. They're spiking interest rates to suffocating levels. Interest rates are the oxygen of the financial system. They sucked all the oxygen out of the room. And here we are. Everyone is clutching for air. And so all assets are coming down. That's just the reality of the situation. So it's impossible to be making money in this market unless you have a short position, which is why I always advocate for having a hedge on your portfolio, two to 5%. But in the meantime, we get to do what every single other early stage billionaire investor has ever done, which is find the highest quality assets with the best fundamentals, do the research, and pick them up as cheap as humanly possible for the massive upside returns. Name me a billionaire who day traded his equity, right? They ride through the storms. They ensure that their equity is as high quality as possible for the long term. And eventually the price action catches up to the fundamentals. So let's dive through the fundamentals of the nuclear energy market. We have this out of the Office of Nuclear Energy. More than 90% of the time, nuclear energy is working all the time. It is a revolutionary energy source, the best energy source by far. And on this metric, it crushes everything else. We also have this from the Office of Nuclear Energy. Micro reactors are factory built, plug and play reactors. They can be used to power military bases, disaster recovery efforts, or remote locations where traditional infrastructure doesn't exist. So again, we are in the early stages of the mass adoption of nuclear power. Technology is facilitating the exponential expansion and use case of this fuel source. And so while the nuclear renaissance is occurring, while we advance technologically, we have a supply crunch on our hands and Bloomberg has picked up on it. Uranium risks becoming the next critical minerals crisis. It's time to lock down these resources now before new political risks emerge. So it's true. We have a geopolitical polarization, West versus East. And so this chart breaks down where all the uranium production is coming from. It's coming from what the World Nuclear Association calls the authoritarian bloc in black, which includes China, the former Soviet Union, Iran, and Pakistan, Blue, the democratic bloc, which includes Europe, North America, and developed Asia, is producing way less. And so this is why Bloomberg is sounding the alarm here, saying that the price of uranium is going to skyrocket unless we invest deeply into it right now in the West, especially if this polarization continues and it has no sign of slowing down anytime soon. Running on empty. The US used to be self-sufficient in uranium these days. Almost all supplies are imported. So you can see domestic production at pathetically low levels. Someone has been asleep at the wheel here, completely and utterly reliant on imports. And so that is why, as we've covered, the United States is pumping money into domestic uranium production, which obviously means higher prices, more investment, more cash flow. Very exciting if you own any of the assets that are going to benefit from that expansion. And so that covers the supply situation of uranium. Obviously, we know it's a scarce above ground asset. We got to get it out of the ground. But the supply only matters if there's enough demand to meet it. And obviously, as we've been covering, demand is far outstripping supply and it's projected to far outstrip supply for many years to come. That is why it is exciting as a commodity investor to be exposed to scarce assets. So let's cover the demand side. UNECE roadmap to net zero calls for greater use of nuclear energy. Nuclear energy plays the same different role in scenarios which achieve carbon neutrality in North America, Europe, and Central Asia, according to a new report from the United Nations Economic Commissions for Europe. What are the global elites saying? The people that pull the strings, the people that run the world. Well, this is a chart of their proposed and expected electricity generation mix assuming a carbon neutrality innovation scenario. So we know the entire world is moving towards carbon neutrality. They want to get green. We know nuclear energy has been classified as green. We know Europe, the United States, all doubling down. In fact, every country around the world is investing deeply into nuclear. And so this is how they are projecting the future energy mix to look. We have nuclear in 
yellow, growing massively. We also have wind growing massively. But what you can see in this chart is that by 2050, they are expecting nuclear to be the most significant energy generation source. That is fascinating, given the narrative around renewables, given how everyone thinks they are the future you have this study from a very elite group mapping out the future, and they have nuclear as the number one energy source in the world as part of a carbon neutrality innovation scenario. Beating wind onshore, which is in the green, beating solar power, which is in the pink, and beating wind offshore. And so if you're investing in the future of the world's energy supply, nuclear energy is the number one investment. And yes, it's selling off on deep red. And yes, the assets are super cheap right now. And yes, the supply crunch is getting worse. And yes, demand is going to pick up. So we've covered supply and demand, right? But we're just getting started. This comes from John Quakes. Nuclear fuel consultants at Trade Techs report new uranium demand hitting term contracts market last week. 860,000 pounds by non-US utilities, 2.7 million pounds by US utilities, 11 million pounds by five plus utilities soon. European buyers are seeking enriched you from anywhere secure, which does not include Russia. And so just unbelievable fundamentals and unbelievable potential arbitrage opportunity when you see the fundamentals skew way bullish while the price action skews way bearish. And so uranium and nuclear power bears are pointing to headlines like this. Belgium to shut nuclear reactor on Friday amid energy crunch. And so we know the energy crisis in Europe is the worst in its modern history. And so Belgium, one country, decides to shut one nuclear reactor. And the response to this can be summarized this way, German finance minister, now is the wrong time to shut down any power plant. Obviously. And so that is, again, one power plant in one country. So let's figure out what is going on in the rest of the world. Slovaks fuel up on new nuclear reactor plant as Europe grapples with the energy crisis. A nuclear energy plant in Slovakia presumably requires just as much uranium as a nuclear energy plant in Belgium. It doesn't matter where they are. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Japan's nuclear drumbeat quickens as public demands energy fix. And so again, as early stage investors, you want to get into an emerging asset class before the good news is baked in, right? And so Japan's power energy mix, nuclear fleet, we have in operation 10. By 2023, they're going to restart 17 and by 2030, they're going to have 27 installed. And so people can focus on one or two European countries making bad moves all they want. But the reality is the massive global demand for nuclear energy is swallowing it up. And what we've seen is that every time one of these countries tries to move away from nuclear, they dive right back into it because it is the most revolutionary energy source. Japan is obviously not the only country taking part in this global renaissance. Efforts to transform U.S. nuclear industry entering full bloom. The company X Energy is building a 320 megawatt plant in eastern Washington. The company TerraPower, which is back where Microsoft founder Bill Gates, will build a 345 megawatt reactor called Natrium in partnership with GE Hitachi in Wyoming. Then you have China, powering China's nuclear ambitions. Xi's trip to Kazakhstan, the world's largest uranium exporter, is another step forward in Beijing's plans to scale up its nuclear energy sector. And so all these stories go to show that the nuclear renaissance is absolutely unfolding. And so the goal in any centrally planned and orchestrated market sell-off due to rising manipulated interest rates is to acquire the assets with the best fundamentals. And so clearly the nuclear story is not slowing down and neither is the supply crunch. We also have the elite of the world supporting it, which is Always a good sign. Sometimes you have to hold your nose as an investor and follow the money. Globally, nuclear power is essential in ensuring energy security and combating climate change. Excellent exchange with Bill Gates on our work to achieve a safer and healthier world. I love to end on the technology of this asset class, where we are going. Again, we're in the early stages of technological adoption and innovation in this space. Offshore could offer a more economical solution for nuclear. 
This comes from Reuters. Citing nuclear power stations offshore and floating oil rig type platforms may offer a more economical solution for electricity generation and clean hydrogen production, according to a new research group. There are so many use cases, so many ways of ensuring that the future world runs on nuclear, and we're just getting started.